Present day. <laughs> Present time. <laughs> Truth here, and welcome to Otaku Evolution. In these trying times, downloading anime into my brain for analysis. And why not? And why not upload my brain into the vast network of computers existing in the world, and as their own subworld when connected? Well, we'll discuss that kind of thing in this video, because we're talking about the 1998 techno psychological horror anime, Serial Experiments Lane. It's about the internet! Kind of. Junior high school student Lane Iwakura is a closed-off, timid girl. When one of her fellow students commits suicide by jumping from a tall building, Lane is surprised to find an email from the deceased girl. One that was written after she killed herself. This curious event spurns the normally reticent Lane's interest in computers, an interest her father shares in spades. She becomes enthralled with the net, called the Wired here, and as things progress, her home computer envelopes her entire room and life. Stranger still, as time passes, the barrier between the real world and the wired one blurs, not just for her, but for others as well. And the more she dives into the wired, the clearer it becomes there might be more than one lane. There is an entity in the wired that has declared himself God for his ubiquity in the interconnecting networks. He shows an interest in Lane as she slowly comes to the realization that her entire life may be a lie. Who are you, Lane? I'm... I'm... Do you know if your parents are truly your real parents? Huh? Is your sister your real sister? What? What are you asking me? Of course, certainly. How about your father's birthday? Can you tell me when that is? Well... What's well, your dad's birthday? And how about your mother's birthday? Do you know when that is? Do you have any idea when your parents were married? Did they meet or was it arranged? Th 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 that's something I really don't know. I That's because I, I... How could you not know? You never even asked, did you? You never celebrated a birthday in your family that you can remember. How about when you were a little girl? Not even then? When and where were you born, Lane? What, what... What does it matter? You don't know. You don't know any of it. Serial Experiments Lane is a 13-episode examination of identity and humans' relationship with technology, with haunting visuals, compelling mysteries, and some intellectual rigor that truly gives it a sense of maturity. When I first watched it, I was mostly watching DBZ and Pokemon, so it was a shock to the system. This and Evangelion were a one-two punch that made me appreciate anime on a higher level. But let's stop for a moment and talk about the internet. Yeah, you're watching this on the internet, so you probably know something about it, right? But let's really think about it. When we think about the internet, we imagine a nearly endless series of computers that connect to each other, creating a vast interlocking network. And in one sense, it is. But that, as well as the following, are oversimplifications. The internet consists of several elements. Obviously, there's all sorts of hardware, from routers to servers and satellites. But it's protocols, which deliver packets of information from the source host to the destination, that establish the methods by which the packets are addressed between the two. The most recent version of Internet Protocol is version 6, 
which simplifies the processing of packets and has a larger addressing space, allowing 667 sextillion addresses per square meter of the planet. The effect, as I understand it, is basically having a separate internet with a more efficient addressing structure. Savvy? So, basically a series of tubes. Oh, they have the internet on computers now. In serial experiments lane, the wired is treated almost as if it were its own world. Or rather, as if it's a layer of reality that always existed, but wasn't discovered until humanity was evolved enough to tap into it. There's more to it, however. The Wired might actually be thought of as a highly advanced upper layer of the real world. In other words, physical reality is nothing but an illusion, a hologram of the information that flows to us through the Wired. But, Ma... This is because the body, physical motion, the activity of the human brain is merely a physical phenomenon, simply caused by synapses delivering electrical impulses. But, Mom, I... The physical body exists at a less evolved plane only to verify one's existence in the universe. The show makes you question the nature of reality itself, including a sense of otherworldly bizarreness in its imagery. Oftentimes, the narrative will be... Well, not necessarily obscured by the spooky visuals, but rather guided in a way that blurs some of the details of the story. It forces the viewer to look at what the visuals are trying to represent in terms of the themes and moods of the series, rather than simply its narrative track. The weirdness then, if not explicitly deliberate, then at least is not incidental in enforcing the themes and moods of the series. Even if some of it is weirdness for its own sake, it rarely feels that way when viewed in a larger picture. The whole point is that there's a breakdown in reality itself, or rather, reality itself has never been what it seemed, as depicted at the beginning of the show. Very early on, Lane exhibits signs of living in a not entirely stable reality, if only for herself. The intention is obviously to get the viewer to question the foundations of reality as Lane does. But doesn't technology often have that effect on the human mind? Haven't we become so accustomed to our technological marvels and distractions that reality itself sincerely feels less real as time passes? Don't we find ourselves wrapped in a cocoon of virtual interactions? And yet technology has done so much for us. I feel like the series turns a critical eye on technology, but without being entirely Luddite about it, much as, say, Pat Labor or Ghost in the Shell. I think the real criticism comes in the form of man's arrogance. Take, for instance, the Kensington experiment done by Professor Hodgson. Wanting to bring out latent psi abilities in children, he hooked several up to a device called a kid system, hoping to do so with it. The result destroyed the minds of the children and the system was trashed. What did you make them do? Science is practical. It isn't just about proving hypotheses. That's what I always believed in. <laughs> That's not what I meant. So, you didn't give any thought to the children at all, did you? I can see now I didn't. It was the KID system that converted the psi received by the outer receptors into electromagnetic waves. These waves were turned into pure energy. This enhanced the function of a certain area of the brain. That is what kids really is. A bigger example is the man named Masami Iri, who developed the seventh internet protocol he wrote into the wire to allow people to use the Schumann resonances to connect to the wire without any peripheral devices. Now living as a spirit without a body in the vast network, Iri deems himself omniscient and omnipresent. Sweet little Lane, she's all alone now, but I'm still here for you. The man who truly loves you is here. You should be able to love me. You must understand I'm the man who first sent you into this world. You know it. I am your creator. Love me. There is no one else. All right, Lane. Transhumanism, or the exceeding of the physical and mental limits of humanity, often by technology, is one of the themes of Serial Experiments Lane. 
Eerie, having discarded his flesh to live in the Wired, is the embodiment of this theme, as well as the girl Chisa in the beginning of the series, who starts laying down her own path of transhumanism. This isn't just the uploading oneself to the networks, but doing the opposite as well, by uploading technology into a version of your own brain, like Lane does towards the end of the series. My mind is the internet, I know every continuity mistake ever made on television. To escape the boundaries of mundane human existence. To exceed the capabilities of the current human form. To accelerate evolution via technology. These are all part of transhumanism. It's what Eerie seeks not just for himself, not just for Lane either, but for humanity, with him as its forerunner and leader. But we see the critique of this movement in the series in Eerie's conceited self-delusion. The series doesn't quite come down on a side, for, or against transhumanism as a concept, rather as a look at some of its danger. What I think Serial Experiments Lane is, ultimately, aside from the examination of identity, is actually a bit of a love story, as exemplified in the relationship between Lane and her friend Alice. No, I don't mean in a romantic shoujo ai kind of love, but a greater love for humanity that Lane finds personified in her best and only real friend. It's Alice that pulls Lane back from the brink of losing herself entirely to Eerie's whims, reminding her that she's a living being, regardless of what her origin or stated purpose may be. It's this love she shows for Lane that is returned in the agape love Lane shows for everyone in her decision at the end of the series. Lane is a weird show, and it never seems like you can quite get everything it's trying to say, but a careful examination will shed enough light on it to get you the general ideas and concepts the creators wish to be known. It doesn't hurt to, now and then, watch a series that challenges your mental faculties, rather than simply soothing your sense of boredom. Lane is a brain food show, and I appreciate what it did for me as a budding anime fan. Well, that's enough Otaku Evolution for now. Next month is the return of 80s month, so let's slick back our hair and wear our sunglasses at night. Until then, see ya! I promise you I'll always be right here. I'm right next to you. Forever.